Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Daily Blessings Showcase, a preview series showcasing and exploring really the 10 dimensions of abiding in God and the Daily Blessings method featured in this new book called Daily Blessings. Surprise, surprise. It is a mindfulness journal on the goodness of God. I am the author and your host for this series, Marshawn Evans Daniels. I am a mama. I am a mother of triplets, actually. I am a wife. I've been uh, married almost a decade uh, to my husband, Jack, and I'm also uh, a business leader and catalyst and mentor and coach and teacher. <laughs> I really have focused this, this last decade on helping ambitious women of faith to upgrade their income and their influence and their walk with God. I firmly believe that spiritual supernatural success and significance requires though um, intimacy deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And that as we gain a greater sense of our identity, we gain greater understanding of where we're designed to have influence in any area of our life. So you don't have to be in business, but I do believe that every single woman on the planet, God has desired to, has designed to operate like the Proverbs 31 woman. And so I wanted to start out with a little bit of context again around that. If this is your first time here, be sure that you go back and watch all the previous classes. Um, in class number one on the series around abiding and abiding in these different dimensions of God, we talked about abiding in the mind of God. Then we talked in class two on abiding in the heart of God. Class three, we talked about abiding in the voice of God. I may have to look now. <laughs> We're getting kind of deep. In class four, we talked about abiding in the names of God. And in class five, we talked about abiding in the plans of God and the plans of God. And in class six, we are hitting my sweet spot, which is the ambition of God. So now, in class six, we're talking about the ambition of God. And the reason I say this is my sweet spot is I have really become very intentional about normalizing holy ambition, supernatural ambition, and understanding God's heart for us, what Jesus had, what he's shown us, and how we can look at a lot of these Bible heroes and understand that perhaps we've been mistaught and created a negative con negative connotation when it comes to ambition, when it's something that God has given us to align us more with our mission. I'll say that again. I firmly believe that when our ambition, let me say again this way, I firmly believe that our ambition is designed to align us with God's mission. And you may need to write that down because uh, so many of us have been taught that it is a negative thing. It's selfish. It's not good. And I found when I first got into, I've been a speaker for 30 plus years. Don't look at the gray. Don't look too close. But uh, when I first got into the world of directly working with women in the trenches, and I've worked with thousands and thousands of women now and men um, in building their businesses and their brands. Confidence was an issue, but also this hesitation. Is it okay for me to want to be successful? Is it okay for me to want to make more money? Doesn't that sound superficial? Doesn't that sound selfish? Doesn't that sound unholy? And so I have become very intentional about a discipling ambition because our ambition has been poorly discipled and in many ways uh, diminished, deflated, and a place of doubt that causes us to not walk in alignment with the fullness of our assignment. The reality is that anything God calls you to, he does not desire for it to be wimpy or weak. He desires for you to win. Now in the Bible, we look at that word victory. In modern society, we use the word success. There is nothing that God desires that he doesn't desire to be. What does it say in John 15? Fruitful, right? God desires that we bear fruit. Um, <clears throat> and for some reason, when we're not talking about something that we think is holy, we think that anything else that we do is supposed to not be that important to God and therefore not important to us. And I can tell you, with with um, I want to be here to tell you today that that is uh, so far from the truth of the freedom that comes with the grace of heaven, right? So anything God calls you to, he desires for you to be successful, to be victorious, to be fruitful, to be expansive, to be prosperous, to be healthy, to be the representation of abundant life. And get this, and I'd love for you to write this down. Anywhere God sends you is holy ground. 
anywhere God sends you is holy ground. In um, James 1.17, the scripture says that every good and perfect gift is from above. And so if God gifted you to cook, to be able to organize, if he made you a strategist, if he made you a singer, if he made you creative, if he made you scientific, if he made you great with media or editing, or maybe he made you an income generator, or maybe he made you a different way, but whatever and however God made you, that gift is from above and that gift is designed to be groomed and grown. And it's part of the expansion plan of the kingdom. So I had to get that off my chest. Okay. Because this is an important piece of walking in destiny and alignment. And you have to dare to believe bigger in order to enter into a place that is higher destiny. I firmly believe that. So we're talking about daily blessings, right? And this daily blessings method and the idea of abiding in these different dimensions of God. So how do we actually abide in this sixth dimension of God, the dimension of his ambition? How can you live in someone's ambition? Well, I actually think we've become really good at that. Think about it. So often we want what other people told us we could have. Why did you pick that degree or this path? What are the things that maybe you would have done if someone hadn't told you that they were not going to be successful? The definition that I give you inside of Daily Blessings about the definition of abide, about the word abide, what that means, it combines a, two different um, words together. But um, the uh, Hebrew word for abide and also the Greek word for abide. Um, the Hebrew word being yashab, and, which means inhabit, and the Greek word mino, which means in part to stay in a place of given expectation. And so I do believe that we can abide. Again, Psalms 91 verse one teaches us and tells us, this is our anchor scripture, that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide. That means reside. That means live. That means be positioned in. That means exist inside of. Shall abide in the shadow of the almighty. And so if abiding is living in this state of expectancy, a living, meaning that you live there. You don't visit. God is not a visitation. He's a what? If you've been watching and paying attention and taking notes, God is not a visitation. He's a habitation. And so we, if we're, if we're living a life right now, the question is, what vision did we get? What inclination, what instruction, what direction did we get to end up where we are or where we have been? Most likely someone presented a buffet of options about what we could do with our life, um, or we watched how other people navigated the world and made a decision about where we should or should not be, what we should or should not do, and we end up getting shoulded on. One of the principles I talk about in Believe Bigger, I'll grab it real quick. I should have done this before we hit record, right? But it's okay. Grab this one. Yep. So one of the principles in Believe Bigger, because there's going to be a little bit of cross-pollinating in this class. This is a heavy chair. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Um, One of the principles in Believe Bigger talks about these rules that we adopt in life. And I believe these rules quench our ambition, but they put us in alignment with somebody else's mission or somebody else's vision for us. And we never, ever really get to hear the purity of what God has for your life, which is the reason he sent you here. There's a path, there's a plan, there's a purpose that he has specifically for you. And so I believe that ambition is really important to understand. Now, um, we don't, want to get shit. We, we all get shitted on, by the way, the things that you should do or shouldn't do. But the real question is, is what has God called you to do? What is he giving you permission to do? And so ambition, 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 ambition. Um, most of us live in the ambition that somebody else had or was afraid to have, or we're living in a life, we're living a life and inside of a dimension right now, That's a reflection of what we were afraid to pursue or would never pursue or we didn't think was holy enough, good enough, blessed enough, or worthy enough to pursue. So 
Let's talk deeper here then about the ambition of God in particular and how can we reside in that? Well, I define ambition as the ability to desire more. The ability to desire more. That word desire is really important. Um, I, If you look at the root word of desire, deseo, means of the Father. And in Psalm 37 verse 4, it says that God gives us the desires of our heart. So I want you to give yourself permission to be ambitious because God is ambitious. Make no mistake about it. God desired more. That's why he crafted and created and formed and fashioned you in your mother's womb. God was ambitious. He said, I want more. He said, let there be light. And there was light. He created this earth because he desired the sale of the father more. He desired things in, in, in alignment with his desire for expansion and dominion. And you are a part of that expansion. And it also says in the scriptures, in Ecclesiastes 1, 7, all rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is never full. You should want more. Like the sea should have enough, right? It covers the majority of the world. But the the, the sea is never full. The ocean is never full. You know why? Because the ocean is a place that is a habitation of life. The sharks and the whales and the fish and the sea turtles, right? They inhabit this ecosystem. It's never full because it's full of life. It's not supposed to be uh, empty. It's supposed to always desire more, to be self-creating. And so we're designed in the image of the creator to create the way he creates, but we cannot create greatness if we don't desire it. Now, I'm not talking about superficial status. That's different. I'm not talking about being seen and having titles and getting applause. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about the sayo desire, the, the desire for more of what you were made for. I'll say that again, the desire for more for what you were made for. And we can't gain that desire by abiding in somebody else's vision of our lives or their fear for their lives and ours. We can't gain that level of the sayo when we're deciding beneath what we believe, um, when we're deciding beneath our belief. Hmm. Here's what God, I think, is trying to say now. So often we don't desire more because we don't believe we're worthy of it. We don't believe someone like us could ever do that. And so we shrink our shores, we shrink our dreams, we shrink ourselves, and we show up as a shell of ourselves. And everything about God calls us to expansion. And so the ability to desire more is my definition for ambition. You must have greater vision. You must have greater belief, not just in that vision, but your worthiness to receive what it is that you perceive. And so God needs you. The reason ambition is important and the reason why I believe God uh, gave me this as a, as a specific piece is because it's important that we understand the permission that he's given us for his individual commission for each of us and specifically for you. God needs you to be you. He needs you to be you, but not the you that you think you are. He needs you to be the you that God knows you are. Because again, he formed and fashioned you in your mother's womb. And so when you abide in the ambition of God, you're abiding in the desires of God. And that is how our desires become his desires. And so anytime you abide, abiding is like an elevator. And um, because God calls us higher because he is higher, right? He, he says this in, um, in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So are my ways higher. So the ways of God, when it comes to what should you do, how should you show up? Um, we won't even use the word should. How have you been called to be? How have you been called to show up? How have you been gifted and equipped to be able to make impact and influence and to have joy and abundance? How have you been equipped for that? We've got to plug back into the manufacturer, right? And um, it's impossible. It is impossible to fly if you have no desire to get off the ground. It is impossible to fly if you have no desire to get off the ground. And God will not force you into the air. He gives us free will. 
He gives us choice. You choosing to be here and to go through these classes is a sign of spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity is a sign of capacity that God is building and expanding your capacity. And if he's expanding your capacity for this, if you actually have your pen and paper and you're taking notes and you are going through your your daily blessings devotional, if you're reading your word and you're serious about this, that means you're being called to a new level, not just at the same level, but at a higher level. You see, abiding is an elevator. God always lifts, he resurrects, and he raises. And as the heavens are higher, right? That means we've got to elevate to the mind of God. We've got to elevate to the way that God sees things. And if we gave ourselves permission to believe that God, well, number one, we gave ourselves permission to believe that we were worthy of the wonderful. What would our minds actually conceive and create? Because if we're created in the image of the creator, we're created to create. And the lack of ambition is stopping your life creation. Your lack of ambition is stopping your life creation. You're limiting your shores. You're minimizing your your own majesty, your own magnificence, your own significance, your own uniqueness that is necessary. And so I want you to come in to this pillar and this dimension of abiding in God, understanding that this is not about you achieving more uh, accolades. I'm not saying those won't come as a byproduct. I'm just saying that's not what God is seeking to give you. He's not trying to give you the superficial. He's trying to bring you back into alignment with the inmost creation that he set, he set up for you in Psalms uh 139 verses 13 and 14 is when he talks about your fearfully one really made and I knit you in your inmost being, right? Let me see. Yeah. And I, I created your inmost being and I knit you together. And so this is what abiding is about. It is about coming into alignment with the sayo the desire of the father. So it becomes your desire. So we don't have to say, God, is this you? Is this what you want? No, God gives us the desires of our heart. It doesn't mean that he's a genie in a bottle. It means that the desire that he gives us shows us what he wants for us. So what if we stopped doubting every single thing that came our way? What would you have, what would you have created already today if you didn't doubt and keep questioning whether it was God? Were you hurting people? <laughs> Sometimes we just need to trust that desire is a deseo desire because we don't have crystal balls and God that we don't have crystal balls and God does not desire for us to have them. Here's how you can bless your steps: asking God to order your footsteps. But He cannot bless steps that you never take. So when you go through uh, this pillar on ambition, as you go through pillar six, the dimension I should say, the 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 sixth dimension of of abiding. Um, there's going to be a lot in here that's going to prayerfully stretch your mind higher, stretch your belief higher, because ambition requires you to believe higher. You cannot leave the ground. You cannot fly unless you desire to leave the ground, right? But if you want to stay there, you can stay there. You will end up in heaven if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but it does not mean that you'll fulfill your destiny. It is a promise that there is a path available to you, but it is not guaranteed and you cannot fulfill it if you don't even desire more. So let's see. Um, there's so many things that I could say, but I don't want to go too long. Um, does God desires that we believe at the level of creation. So when I say believe higher, I'm talking about believing at the level of creation. When God created this world, he was believing at the level of creation. We're created in his image. We're supposed to believe at the level of creation. That means we've got to perceive. That means we've got to have vision. We've got to see what is not as though it were and then have the ambition to allow our footsteps to be ordered, to be able to perceive and believe the voice of the Holy Spirit the same way that Joseph, Jeremiah, Abraham, uh, the Proverbs 31 woman, Mary, Elizabeth, Noah, John the Baptist. The same way that each of them had to believe a word that was spoken about what was to come, what they were supposed to do, that had nothing to do with what they could actually see. It did not align with what they saw. They had to desire to hear and to believe and to actually have a level of trust, right? Before you can pursue something, right? It's not, I don't think that Noah sat around saying, I wanted to build, I want to build an ark, something that massive. 
Maybe he wanted to be called for greatness. Maybe he wanted safety. Maybe he just wanted nothing more than just to care for his family, which is a beautiful, elevated desire in and of itself. But I don't gather he was sitting around trying to build an ark. The reality is what you desire in that you can define is always less than how you've been designed. What you desire that you can define is always less than how you've been designed because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has planned for you, my friend, my sister, my brother. And the truth is what you want right now is different than Deseo. And it's not that it's not bad. And I'm not saying don't lean into that because sometimes it's our wants that get, a, get us into the Deseo uh, frequency. But what I will say that is going to be a, a game changer is by choosing to abide in the ambition of God. God, what is your will, not my will, as Jesus prayed? Help me to want what you want. Help me to have my heart break for what your heart breaks for. And, and it, it is in that and through the daily blessings method, as you're tracking your daily blessings with supernatural gratitude, appreciation, and even self-affirmation, you're building up your most holy faith. You're building up your identity. You're building up your the way that you see God move in everything. And that is how, when you see God move in everything, you know he will move in anything. And that's when he does big things. It's in the small things. And our ambition in the moments becomes aligned. You're going to start, I want to challenge you in this phase also to not just look at great things that are happening to you, but I want you to start looking at awesome moments that God is using you to happen to it, where you get to be a blessing and seeing um, how your desire is for the caring for other people, giving yourself heart expansion in this area as well. And this could be totally different depending on what season you're at in your life. But I would love for you, my prayer for you is that you would give yourself permission to experience Deseo. Because at the end of the day, true ambition is surrender. True ambition is surrender. It is giving our dreams a bath. And every dream needs a bath. You've got to remove the dirt of self. You've got to remove the dirt of self. You've got to remove the dirt of self for the destiny of service and for the destiny of souls. You're called to win souls for the kingdom. I don't care what job description you've given yourself, what job you get paid for, what you were made for is to lead other people to the kingdom. That is, will always be the main thing. And so surrender comes first from understanding what's important to God. What's important to God is kingdom expansion. When you create at the level of creation by supernatural design and default, that is at the pace of expansion. And what is God expanding? He's expanding the kingdom. He's expanding the kingdom in terms of dominion and domination. So God is not expanding you for, even if you're still not with me on this ambition thing, you're like, it's selfish. Take refuge in this then. God is not expanding you. He is expanding the kingdom through you. And when you get this, I believe you will see a level of expansion and increase and prosperity and growth and alignment and healing and wholeness. Because now his heart is syncopated with yours. Your ambition is um, a reflection of his ambition, his mission, and his vision for you. All right. Well, that's all for today because I could give you so much more. Make sure that as you go through this, that you are actually doing not just the devotional piece that kicks you off for your week of abiding in the particular dimension of God, but also that you are completing your daily blessings method in the morning, your quiet time word with the Holy Spirit, that you are um, allowing yourself to pause and allow God to tell you, why did you give me this word, God? Why did you give me this, this quiet time word? What is it you're saying to me, for me, about me? And then there is a different question every single morning that you're going to journal. And this is where you start to learn how to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying from you, for you, not what's on um, the web and experts and gurus and pastors and sermons and other people telling you what God is saying to you. No, this is intimate. This is the word that you need from the Lord for you in your life right now as daily bread. Because when God gives us our daily bread, <laughs> when God gives us our daily bread, this is how we continue to experience daily blessings. Okay. Um, you're going to pin your praise, what you're thankful for. And if you do your quiet time word, I encourage you to come up with 
and allow revelation or get into your Bible to find your scripture of the day, one scripture of the day. But if you have any trouble, I've also given you a different scripture every day as well. And then in the evening, you're going to look back over your day, right? From the whispers of the Holy Spirit that you got in the morning, you're going to be expectant about expecting to see God show up. And you're going to track three moments of goodness, grace, and gratitude where you saw God show up in small things, big things, amazing things, things that blew your mind or subtle things. And in the beginning, it may be a little hard. And if it is, it's because our minds are calibrated to look for what's not working and we're, we're overwhelmed with that. And as you continue this evening daily blessings method, you're going to also take inventory of what's going well in your life. And the final thing you're going to do is you're going to give an affirmation to yourself of what you love about yourself. It is so important to go to bed with this so that your mind, your spirit, and your body, the cells inside of your body and your spirit is not thinking about nonsense and junk and what's wrong and trauma and drama. You're thinking about how God loved you all day. You're thinking about how he moved for you all day. This is growing your Godfidence, your supernatural confidence. And Godfidence is designed for one specific thing, which is to keep you moving forward. All right. Now, I will talk about confidence on another series, another time. I've been teaching it for over 20 years. But um, what you love most about you is incredibly important to understanding what God says about you. And what you say to yourself will determine whether you are actually speaking the words of the enemy over your life and inside of your spirit, or if you're allowing the language of heaven to be lavished over you. Because all of this, all of this is a, supposed to be a journey where we discover that our real identity is love. Okay, you're loved by God more than you can ever imagine. And every day, my prayer as you do this process is that you will experience it more and more. All right, well, that is it for uh, the sixth dimension. There's so much goodness in here. Again, this is one of my favorite topics in the world. Um, I want to encourage you to keep your Bible with you. I want to encourage you to invite other people. And of course, I want to encourage you to order a copy or copies and get this for your women's ministry and tell leaders in the women's ministry, women at your job, your sister circle, someone who's kind of struggling with their faith or not a believer, get it for any woman that comes to your mind, girls in your life, daughters, uh, college students. I know when I was in college, it was devotionals that really helped me stay anchored in hearing from the Holy Spirit in the midst of a lot of stuff that was not holy. <laughs> So be sure to get your copy at dailyblessingsjournal.com. When you do, there is a free life class that you will be able to get from me called Holy Mindfulness at dailyblessingsjournal.com. So be sure that you uh, get your copy, go back to that website so that you can uh, get your free workshop as well, get a ticket to this workshop. And then also um, be sure just to tell other people to join us for this journey. I'm really excited. Um, and I'm proud of you for being a part of this process. I'll see you next time on the Daily Blessing Showcase. Take care. God bless.